Good morning to all. This is Dr. C. Radhika Dayakumari, Associate Professor, Department of Physics, Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research, Chennai. Today, I am going to present a topic from the course Semiconductor Physics. Let me see the outline of the presentation. Our presentation covers classical free electron theory, quantum free electron theory, and band theory. Introduction about these three theories. After the discovery of electron, scientists they are very interested to know about the electrical and thermal properties of the electrons. Based on their interest, all these three theories arises and in general, these three theories are called as the basic free electron theories. So, this electron theory, it mainly aims to explain the structure and properties of solids mainly through their electronic structure. Hence, the electron theory of solid has been developed in three main stages. One, the basic one, it is the classical free electron theory. Second one, it is the quantum free electron theory. And the third one, it is the band theory. Next is about the classical free electron theory. Classical free electron theory was proposed by the scientists namely Drood and Lawrence in the year 1900. According to his concept, the metals containing the free electron which obey the laws of classical mechanics. So, next theory arises, it was the quantum free electron theory. This quantum free electron theory was proposed by the scientist namely Sommerfield in the year 1928. According to his concept, the electron moves in a constant potential, hence obeys the quantum laws. Based on these two theories, the basic theory it was the classical free electron theory. This classical free electron theory clearly explains the electron's movement in the uh, presence of electric field and also in the absence of electric field based on the concept that the electrons are moving, electrons are assumed to be a perfect gas. Uh, so, hence it obeys the laws of classical mechanics also. So, that they have find some, diff some drawback in this theory and the drawback of the classical theory was overcome by the quantum theory by the scientist Sommerfield. And according to his concept, uh, in the quantum theory, the electron is moving in a constant potential and most of the concept was clearly explained in this quantum free electron, based on the quantum free electron theory which obeys the quantum laws. Next theory, it is the band theory. Band theory was proposed by the scientist namely Bloch in the year 1928 and he according to his concept, the free electrons are moving in a periodic potential provided by the lattice. Based on this band theory, we can uh, it clearly explains the mechanism of semiconductivity based on the based on the concept energy band and so only this theory is called the band theory of solids. Next is classical free electron theory. The classical free electron theory, it is the basic theory. It is a macroscopic theory. So, it clearly explains the movement of electrons. Okay. First, let me see in the absence of electric field, how the electrons are moving inside the metal. You consider this diagram. First point, the free electrons in metals move freely or randomly in all possible directions in the absence of electric field. This was clearly explained in this diagram. So, this rectangular box you consider as a metal. Inside the small circle, it represents the electrons and the arrow represents the direction of the movement of electrons. So, according to the first point, the electrons, the free electrons which is present inside the metal, it is moving randomly in all the directions without any electric field. So, while it is moving, it can collide with each other. While it is moving, this free electrons, it is colliding with each other and also it can collide with the lattice or the boundary of the metal without any losses in the energy. Hence, the force between the electrons and the ion is negligible. Hence, its total energy is taken to be only kinetic, not the potential. In the metal, in the metal, if we apply an electric field, what happens is the randomly moving free electrons, it starts to move in a direction opposite to the electric field. This was shown in this diagram that is E represents the electric field direction and the arrow shows that the electric field direction is towards the left. 
but see another the elect free electrons direction is shown by small small arrows that free electrons movement is just opposite to the electric field direction if we apply an electric field to the metal this was the concept clearly explained in the classical free electron theory so as a result of its movement this free electron is acquiring a constant velocity and that constant velocity is called as the drift velocity so with this with this the drift velocity term it is very important so now it is very important to define this drift velocity so how can we define the drift velocity means it is the average velocity acquired by the free electron in a particular direction due to the application of electric field such average velocity is called as the drift velocity once while studying about the free electron the drift velocity term is very important the another important term it is the mobility the mobility is the drift velocity acquired by the free electron per unit electric field applied to it so this mobility it is denoting it is representing the movement of electrons in the presence of electric field so your mobility can be represented as mobility is equal to drift velocity by electric field so with all these uh, ideas there are some drawbacks in the classical free electron theory also what is how these drawback arises means see they have we have assumed that the electron is considered to be a free electron gas to be a perfect gas if it is a perfect gas if it is a perfect gas when the temperature is at zero kelvin means the electron may get get the energy the electron's energy is energy should also be equal to zero hence uh, according to the theory it is clear that if the kinetic energy is zero the material is said to be at rest so based on these concept some drawback may arises so what are the drawback is the first drawback it is that is it is a macroscopic theory it is a macroscopic theory it is it is just explain the movement of electrons and also its energy it is giving it is not giving about it is not giving more idea about the energy and the energy distribution of electrons inside the metal metals and all so so what because it is a macroscopic theory this seems to be one of the drawback in this classical free electron theory and the second one it is the classical theory it states that all free electrons are absorbs energy but quantum theory states that only a few electron it is absorbing energy and the third important point is this classical theory fails to explain some of the some of the important optical properties also that is it fails to explain the compton effect photoelectric effect black body radiation etc which is very important but the quant based on the quantum laws these concepts are completely uh, explained clearly based on the quantum theory so up to this the classical free electron theory is over next we can move how the quantum theory overcomes this uh, rectified all the drawbacks in this classical free electron theory quantum free electron theory the drawbacks of classical theory can be rectified using the quantum theory the problem was approached by approached by considering the fermi dirac statistics assumptions so according to classical theory the kinetic energy of an electron is zero at zero kelvin but quantum theory states that the an electron is moving in a constant potential so based on that based on the based on the quantum theory concept the electrons arrangement in an energy level can be clearly explained this can be clearly explained based on the following terms what are the terms means first is about the energy distribution of an electron that is how based on what energy the electron is distributed in an energy level next is the number of available energy states and the third one it is the number of filled energy states and the last one it is the probability of filling an electron in an energy state we cannot find out the exact number of electrons so hence we are just we are considering the probability of filling an electron in an energy state by considering the probability distribution function so next let me see the energy distribution of an electron so energy distribution of an electron the first point is the energy levels are discrete energy levels are not continuous it is a discrete one second point is the space between two energy levels are levels is very less 
which is of the order of 10 power minus 6 electron volts. Hence, the distribution of energy level seems to be continuous because of very less spacing between two energy levels, the distribution seems to be continuous. So, each energy level can provide only two electrons, one for spin up and the other for spin down. Thus, two electrons can be filled in each energy state. For example, if there are n number of electrons means there are n by 2 number of energy states. So, this can be clearly explained in the diagram which is shown here. See, look at the diagram. All these horizontal lines represent the energy levels. And in each energy level, two, two dots have been seen and two dot represents the electrons. Which means each energy level is occupied by two electrons. For example, if there are n number of electrons means there are n by 2 number of energy states. So, the maximum energy level up to which the electrons can be filled that, that energy level is represented by EF. EF is nothing but the Fermi energy level. EF is called the Fermi energy level. So, and also the number of available energy states are called as the density of states. This, how can we define this Fermi energy level means? It can be defined as Fermi energy level is the maximum energy level up to which the electrons can be filled at 0 Kelvin. Fermi energy level, it is the maximum energy level up to which the electrons can be filled at the temperature T is equal to 0 Kelvin. But if, if the, if the uh, above the Fermi energy level, no electrons will be occupied, only the energy levels will be there, but that energy levels will be empty without electrons. Below the Fermi energy level only the electrons are occupied. This is the Fermi energy level. This is very important while uh, studying about the distribution of electrons in an energy state. Next is the Fermi distribution function. What is this Fermi distribution function is? Fermi distribution function is represented by F of E. This F of E gives the probability of an electron filling in an energy state. How? What is the probability of an electron which is going to fill in an energy state? This is given by the Fermi distribution function and your Fermi distribution function F of E is equal to 1 by 1 plus E power E minus E F by K T. This E F represents the Fermi energy and K represents the Boltzmann constant and T represents the temperature. Next is the band theory. Band theory. From the quantum theory, it is difficult to differentiate the materials into conductors, semiconductors, insulators, etc. So, to overcome that problem, the next theory arises for the band theory. This band theory was proposed by the scientist named Bloch in the same year of uh, quantum free electron theory itself. So, according to this band theory, uh, this band theory is also called zone theory. According to this band theory, the materials can be very easily classified. The materials can be very easily classified based on the concept energy gap. The very important thing here it is the energy gap. Based on this energy gap only, we can very easily categorize the materials into conductors, insulators and semiconductors. So, this theory, this, uh, this theory clearly explains this concept based on the energy band gap. So, the free electron theories fail to explain why some materials, some solids or conductors, insulators and semiconductors. A solution to this problem was clearly given by the band theory of solids. According to band theory, the potential energy of an electron within the crystal is periodic due to the periodicity of the crystal. We know that crystal means the regular periodic arrangement of atoms only. We are calling it as a crystal. So, here with the band theory, here we are talking about the periodicity of the crystal. So, in this case, according to this band theory, the potential energy of an electron within the crystal is periodic. So, that is, so the free electrons, it can move, free, it can move freely inside the crystal lattice, but the movement should be periodic. That is the main concept which is given in the band theory and this is clearly based on the energy band gap.
next is so in this according to this band theory the potential energy of the solid may vary periodically with the periodicity of space lattice but as per the quantum free electron theory it states that electrons movement is constant electron is having constant periodic constant potential inside the crystal lattice that is according to the quantum theory here as per the band theory the electrons potential is periodic inside the crystal lattice based on these concept only the materials can be clearly categorized as semiconductors insulators and also conductors etc so it is assumed that the potential energy of an electron at the positive ion side when the electron when it is moving inside the material when the electron when it is moving inside the crystal lattice when it is coming near to the positive ion its potential become zero its potential means the electron's potential become zero and when it is moving far away little it is moving away from the positive ion means its potential become maximum its potential become maximum based on these concept only the band theory clearly band theory clearly explains this so look at the diagram the first diagram the first part it shows the periodic arrangement of atoms inside the crystal lattice so all the positive ion cores are uh, placed or uh, are placed in the crystal lattice and all these plus represents the positive ion cores and see the electrons move motion is represented by this diagram so electron is moving throughout the crystal lattice if the electron the negative represents the minus sign the negative represents the electrons if the electron is coming near to this positive ion its potential becomes zero when it starts to move far away its uh, its potential become maximum it starts to increase and when it is nearly halfway between two positive ion cores means its potential become maximum that only we have represented in the second diagram so the second diagram shows the electrons potential and also how much distance it is varying so here the black color dot in this diagram in the second diagram it represents the positive ion cores and the lines and the and the solid line shows the electrons movement so here if the electron is if the electron is coming near to the near to the positive ion core its potential become zero when it is moving away it starts to increase and when it is exactly midway between two positive ion cores its potential become maximum so this so this diagram clearly represents the electrons periodic potential inside the crystal lattice this was clearly explained by the band theory next is Next is the electron's periodic potential in a one dimensional array can be very clearly given, very clearly explained in the chronic penny model. So this is the chronic penny model and this chronic penny model demonstrate that a simple one dimensional periodic potential which is giving the energy bands as well as the energy band gaps. Already, already I said that um, the materials are clearly classified classified based on the energy band now what is called this energy band means in this one in this chronic penny model the electrons movement in the energy energy band band gap and also in the energy band is clearly explained in the chronic penny model so look at the diagram all these blue color lines just like one square wave all these blue color line it represents the electrons periodic movement in the crystal lattice electrons periodic movement in the crystal lattice electrons movement so here what is here is see listen see this over oh, zero a a plus b this all represents the interatomic distance which means the distance between two positive ion cores so here if the electron is moving inside the potential well if the see here the 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 big arrow it represents the potential well and this part we are representing it as the potential barrier this arrow these two arrow it represents the potential well well means it is just going inside which means inside that a positive ion core will be there so if the electron is coming inside here inside the potential well its potential become zero if it is moving away 
it is if it is moving away means its potential its potential become maximum so this part when the potential is zero means that part we are calling it as the potential well and if the potential become maximum means that part we are calling it as the potential barrier so this chronic penny model clearly demonstrates the electrons periodic potential inside the crystal lattice in an one dimensional case next is so here the uh, this is the explanation of the chronic penny model in the potential well near the positive ion electron potential is zero and in the potential barrier away from the positive ion the electron potential is maximum this is the explanation for this chronic penny model to explain the electrons periodic potential inside the crystal lattice in a one dimensional case next is about the energy bands how the materials how the materials are classified into insulators semiconductor and conductor based on the energy bands now we are going to discuss this part now the materials in general the materials may be classified into conductors semiconductors and insulators that we all know now as per this based on the based on the concept of energy band how the materials are differentiated this part we are going to see now okay here this diagram clearly explains clearly shows the energy band diagram for the insulator b for the semiconductor and c for the conductor what is the energy band means there are two important band we have to find out we have we should know one is the valence band and the other is the conduction band valence band means if the temperature is zero kelvin when the temperature is zero kelvin or if there is no electric field or no any other temperature we are giving initially all the electrons which are bounded and such electrons will be present in the occupied in the valence band and the conduction band will be empty and so the gap between the valence band and the conduction band the gap between the space between the valence band and the conduction band is called as the energy gap depending on the property of the material the energy gap of the property the energy gap of the materials may vary the energy gap may vary based on the property of the material if it is an insulator if it is an insulator which means the bad conductor it is a non conducting material the energy gap will be more the energy gap is more for the insulating material but uh, if it is a conducting material if it is a conducting material means it will take part in the current conduction all the electrons in if we directly for the conducting material all the electrons are the free electrons directly it can take part in the current conduction so in the case of conducting materials the gap energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band is very low not very low the band the conduction band and the valence band it will be overlapping with each other so meanwhile it is overlapping means it means that there is no energy gap for the conducting material because of this property only because of no energy gap only the all the materials the conducting materials the example it is a metal for a metal if we directly apply an electric field or a voltage means directly it can take part in the current conduction in immediately this is for the conductor so in the case of insulators the energy gap is more but in the case of conductors there is no energy gap so only we are telling that conductors it is a good conductor of electricity and for insulator it is a non conductor of electricity it will not conduct because energy gap is very high so the electrons will be present only in the valence band all the bounded electrons will be present only in the valence band conduction band is empty so it is very difficult for the electrons in the valence band to go to the conduction band because of large energy gap so only we are telling this as the insulators which is a non conductors next in between this conductors and the insulators which comes a, a new material it is a semiconductor from the name itself it is clear that it is a semiconducting material semi means half that is 
partially it will act as a conducting material and partially it will act as a non-conducting material it may have the both the behavior of conductors and the insulators so for a semiconducting material its conductivity will be between conductors and the insulators so in the case of semiconductors there is the energy gap is there but the energy gap is very less the energy gap is very less when compared to the insulator so because of small energy gap initially if there is no temperature or no energy is given the material the semiconducting material will act as an insulator but if we add or if we increase a small temperature even the electrons which is present in the valence band it gains the energy and it can very easily it can cross the energy gap and it can go to the conduction band because the energy gap is very less because of this property the semiconducting material can change from the insulator to a conducting material so what it comes the name it is a semiconductor partially when it is at zero kelvin the semiconducting material will act as an insulator and if we increase the temperature the particular semiconductor it will act as a conducting material because the conduction because the electrons from the valence band it can cross the energy gap and it can go to the conduction band so once the electron when it goes to the conduction band immediately it starts to connect so this is the classification of insulators semiconductors and conductors based on the energy band gap so next let me see some of the properties of this conductors insulators and the semiconductors so first is the properties of conductors regarding the conductors we all know that conductors means it is a good conductor of electricity in general very good example it is a metal so it is a material that can easily conduct the electric current it is a material that can very easily conduct the electric current the second is it may have it may have one valence electron which is very loosely bounded to the atom so these bounded atom can become a free electron with the addition of very small amount of energy all the for all the conducting materials or for the metals the one loosely free electron will be there so what that free electron will do directly it will be occupied in the conduction band so once if we increase a, increase a temperature or some electric field is given or a small energy is given directly it starts to conduct directly the free electrons become more and it starts to conduct because there is no energy gap it don't want to cross any gap and all okay so what the uh, material it is a conducting material so in the conducting material the free electrons are the charge carriers in a conductor for a conducting material the free electron only is responsible for the current conduction in the conducting materials that is the metals the examples are all the metals we can say copper silver gold aluminium etc everything it will come under a metal and these are the examples of the conducting materials next let me see the properties of an insulators see insulators means as per according to the uh, energy band gap according to the band theory it is clear that the gap between the valence band and the conduction band is very high for the very large for the insulating material so it does not conduct electric current under normal condition because the energy gap is more and also it has high very high electrical resistivity hence the atoms are tightly bounded to one another atoms are tightly bounded to one another and so the electrons are very difficult to move away for the current flow hence in this case all the valence electrons are tightly bounded to the atoms only there is no free electrons more all the valence electrons like mostly all the valence electrons are tightly bounded to the atoms so only this will not take part in the current condition under normal conditions the examples are rubber plastic glass mica etc we can say all will come under the category of insulating materials which is a non conducting material next let me see the properties of a semiconductors i already said that semiconductor means it is a material which has the conductivity electrical conductivity in between the conductors and the insulators when the semiconductor in its pure state 
it's neither a good conductor nor a good insulator that is when it is at zero kelvin at the temperature zero kelvin it acts as an insulator it acts as an insulator and if the temperature is given or some impurities are added it acts as a conducting material that means it starts to conduct but in the case of semiconductors we can say the free electrons and holes are the charge carriers it has two charge carriers either free electrons also will take part in the current conduction for the semiconducting materials like the same way the holes also will take part in the current conduction for the semiconducting material so what we are telling concluding that the free electrons and holes are the charge carriers for a semiconducting materials the very good pure example of a semiconducting materials are it is the germanium and silicon we can see more elaborately about the semiconducting materials in the further sessions thank you thank you